It took me time to heal myself. No matter what my mom said or no matter what anybody said about what I had been through, I'm okay. You're always gonna be healing, by the way. I went through sexual abuse, but that doesn't mean I'm suffering today. I'm Jeannie Mai, and today I'm unfiltered. I saw my first lipstick when I was three. But my first love for what lipstick could do was when I lived with a drag queen who owned a gentleman's club in San Francisco. The things that bitch did with lipstick, let me tell you. I am Bay Area born. I rep the Bay Area. And that means that I come from a melting pot of so many cultures. And when I was a kid, I was a hard worker. I worked when I was like, six years old, helping my parents um, sell different things in their businesses. I was the original definition to Rihanna's work, 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 work. Do we have to pay for that? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> so my parents are a mix of Vietnamese and Chinese, but I grew up speaking predominantly Vietnamese. Um, we had a three bedroom home and we sponsored the rest of the family that weren't able to escape from Vietnam into our house. So I slept on a bunk bed with three other boys. I know, it was gross. And I loved my house. I had no idea that what we were doing was not normal. We always had something cooking on the stovetop, whether it was pho or bung rie or gum tam. And I spoke predominantly Vietnamese until I was like in second grade. So I didn't realize that I was different until the kids started to make fun of me for not speaking English. But thanks to Sesame Street, guess who came out on top? It's insane, but it's not insane that I used to be made fun of for talking so much, being overly energetic. They tried to get me to take some hyper pills when I was in first grade. And now I do it for a living. But it all goes to show that if you really hold on to what makes you you, and you can find a way to make people happy through that talent, yo, you're gonna have the career of your dreams. So I'm proud of the fact that my parents helped support me to not change that about myself. My mom didn't want me to be a quiet Asian. She didn't want me to stay silent about my opinion. She wanted me to speak out. Ah! Yes, honey. <laughs> we have to save those because we're Asian. That's what we do. You know, it's actually really hard for me to think about the first moment of success because I don't look at it that way. Like, I don't want to. I want to still keep looking for that first moment of success. I mean, I've won an Emmy, and I have enough to buy a house, and enough to take care of my family, but I don't want it to end because I think I've made it. I'm always going to continue chasing that dream. And for me, success is gonna be something that I keep discovering, but I don't wanna think I've just made it. It honestly is a very Asian way of thinking. We still love to work because we escaped to come here to have that opportunity to build a career. So we'll never stop until we just feel like we've done enough for ourselves, you know? I've definitely learned coming from an Asian American culture. My people don't talk about their problems. Um, I don't wanna say that for every family, but I definitely know that my people, like my people in my household, we didn't talk about our problems. But what it did teach me once I started to speak out and had other friends that taught me, hey, actually letting things go off your chest is really important going there and, and, and digging up some things that are really deep and, and have been bothering you for way too long has to be talked about. I learned that you are responsible for keeping your soul clean. And if you have little bits in it that you let erode or get moldy, it will infect the rest of your heart and then it starts to get in your actions. You wonder why you snapped at your loved one or you wonder why you can't keep a relationship. You wonder why you can't keep a job. You wonder why people find you have mood swings. This is coming out from other areas that you haven't touched on. I'm so thankful that I grew up not understanding that you need to let things out. Things that I've gone through in my past and divorce and why I really suck at math and doing things that should be automatic to me, but, but being able to talk about it makes me feel like, okay, it's not so bad. I can see it in front of me, so I can find other ways to deal with it. Not, what the hell? <laughs> Don't throw it away, it's too good. Mama Mai is fuego. Period. That's accident. Just so you know though, you usually don't want to tell your kids that they're accidents. Whatever. Mama Mai's everything inspired me growing up. Mom, you, you got pregnant at 16. That's your father's problem, it's not me. My mom is a larger than life, amazing Shiro. My mom really taught me to be fearless and 
I love her. She's just so much fun. She is completely the reason why I am a personality and a success to myself today. But it's horrible dating with Mama Mai. You didn't have any experience with my dating. I want to see what you're talking about so I can give you tip. She is nosy. She da nosy. That's what she says. Mama Mai, when I was a kid, she would be the first one eavesdropping on my phone calls. Hello? Who you call for, huh? She would be still today, every time my phone goes off, we die for it and lose nails because she's the one that's looking to see who I'm dating. One time, I was talking to a friend and I told my friend who I was dating. She went to my follows on Instagram and looked up who it was that I was dating. She went to his Instagram, followed him, commented, I follow you, I watching you. Eyeball, eyeball emoji. At the mama my blue MF check mark. That guy never called me again. You know who you are, dude. And I'm sorry. I'm so thankful for it because the person who can't take Mama Mai is not the person to take me. You know what I'm saying? So Mama Mai and I were very, very close growing up. And then when I turned nine, there were some things that happened to me. And then I confronted her when I was 16 and she didn't quite handle it the way she should have. And so I had a falling out with her from 16 to about 24. I avoided her in all costs. There was one time we showed up at a party because our family members thought it was really cute to try to set us up so we'd make, you know, make up. Yo, the pots and pans that came flying at my face, the words I said to her, the fight that was about to go down, it took me time to heal myself so that no matter what my mom said or no matter what anybody said about what I had been through, I'm okay. You're always gonna be healing, by the way. Um, I'm a victim of sexual abuse. Um, but that doesn't mean that's all that I am today. That doesn't mean I'm suffering today. So I had to be clear with where I'm at to then talk to my mom because what I really wanted from getting clarity with my mom is that I not only wanted to understand if she understood what I went through because I don't think she would do the same thing today, but I also wanted to, her to know that this can't continue on, especially in Asian culture. Because like I just said, we don't talk about things and kids don't even know how to approach their parents about things. I told you that this person, this family member has been touching me and has been doing things to me every single day for years. And you never helped me. So I confronted my mom because I, I needed to confront myself and I also needed to hear myself say that I am okay and I am better now and I am strong because of what I went through. I don't even care about him anymore. This is what I care about, you and me. Nothing can ever come between us. This is not going to be something that exists between me and my mom. I have to say, I'm really sorry, Kong. I'm really sorry because uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know why I, I love that boy and I take care like a real son and then do that to you. I cannot believe it. So that's why I confronted my mom and I'm so glad I did because I heard and I saw her and now I understand. And now I feel so much more cleansed. To all my ladies out there who question getting older or feel stressed out just about that next birthday, think about the fact that you opened two damn gifts this morning, your eyes. I just think the more you own all these amazing years that gives you, by the way, the swag that you didn't have the year before, that's what you should ride on and that's what makes you look younger. So I'm thankful to be able to have that nurturing personality to want to give to all those areas of my life. I love when we have a good audience. Yeah. Amazing. You guys just woke us up. We don't yeah. need to And to be able to love on all those amazing kids out there who need a cousin genie like me. Boom. I get through a bad day by finding an ingrown hair to pick at. I have so much glee. When you get into that little bump of skin and you see the little black for me black, that little black curled up little mother right in there and you're like, I know you're in there and I gotta get you out. So you exfoliate with coffee grinds, you pick at it with your tweezer man and eventually that little mofo comes out like this and you're like, ooh, I'm about to get, ooh, it's about to be so good. And you get in there with your tweezers and you pull it and the mother's like this long and you're like, I have purpose.
Thank you, everybody. We're saving the lashes. Save it, save it.